We are in 2020, we're in February. One of the hottest topics coming out of comics this week. I don't remember a fervor like this in a long time. And we're talking about that DC Comics character punchline. We don't bury the leads in deep into the show. We're going to hit you right out of the cannon with it. Punchline, everyone's talking about it right now. We got Batman 89. We got Hell Arisen number three. Now you're seeing Batman number 92 and 94 catch heat. What do you guys think about this character? What do you guys think about this storyline? Andy, we're going to start with you. I know nothing. I am not, I'm not a traditional Batman reader or a DC reader for that matter, but there was enough. I saw, I saw enough rumblings going on on social media. Um, I don't know, a week and a half, maybe even two weeks ago. Where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to add it to the poll list. I want to at least read it and see what happens. And I got a copy of cover a, um, I'm going to see it through to issue 100 and, um, against my better judgment, I'm not going to sell the book. I want to keep that run and see what happens. And, and, you know, maybe hopefully this doesn't turn into that um, whole Naomi thing from earlier from like 2019, but yeah, I want to read this through 100, see what happens. Um, hold on to them. Maybe once I'm done with that, then I let them go as a set. What about you, Ryan? Are you, I know you're more of a Marvel guy. Yeah, but um, you know, you couldn't help but see all the information and uh, all this uh, stuff about punchline coming out. So it intrigued me um, that morning. I did go to the comic shop. And I went early um, just to kind of see what was going on. A lot of people were actually uh, camped out. Uh, I don't know how much earlier they were camped out to get this book. So I, you know, if it's not something that I want and I can get access to it, I'll get it for my friends. And so I got a couple of, of, of books uh, for some friends of mine and was like, let me look into this. And my feeling on the book or on Punchline is, DC is just trying to capitalize on some of the um, some of the popularity of Harley Quinn that has maybe died off a little bit, and they're hoping they can continue on with this punchline character. And I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's. Gonna, I think it's going to be something they short live. I don't think it'll uh, go for a real long time. Um, if I was in the market to flip books, I would be flipping this faster. I think than I would be holding it longer, because. Um, I don't know, just from my viewpoint, I think they're going it, to, it, it's, and, and it's also overshadowed the other character, which was what, designer? So that, I think, might be actual, the actual character that might have a little more punch to it, maybe in the long run. So let me ask you this, both of you guys. When you went to your, did you go to one comic book store? Did you go to multiple comic book stores? And were they cover price, or did you see them marked up, or were they just completely out? Or we're hearing stories up and down the narrative for it. Yeah, I, I went and um, I got lucky, uh, had it in my pull box. Um, I went first thing in the morning when they opened and none of cover A and none of cover B even made it to the shelf. They sold out of everything that they ordered directly to their polls, to their, their poll customers. Um, I only went to one shop. I only frequent one shop. There are, uh, there's another shop in my town, but that shop will take copies off his shelf and put them in the back when he hears stuff like this. So I guarantee you, if I went to that shop, there'd be nothing on the shelf in about a week or two. He's probably got them up on his counter for about 40 bucks a piece. He probably does right now. And like Jack's talked about, you know, I'm, I'm going to vote with my wallet. I'm with Jack on that one. And it's one of those retailers that will pull copies off the shelf or not even get them on the shelf when there's heat like that. And they'll, they'll price them at what eBay prices are a day or two after Wednesday. Yeah, I went to uh, a shop early in the morning, and they had copies of um, the regular, I guess, copy A, and then they had uh, the, I think it's Del Auto was a copy, or cover B, and uh, I, they would only allow you to have one copy of the book, whether, it, and it wasn't, you can have one of each cover, you can only have one copy. So I got copy A, and then I did go to another store pretty, pretty quickly after I got that one, just to see if I can grab another one. When I got to the other store, they said they were all out. But as I was walking out, they said they had one more left. And uh, they did sell to cover. Um, but there were a lot of stores in it that I anticipated sold, sold for more. Um, last week, whenever there was a big deal with the uh, Scott Young Ver uh, Venom cover, one of the local uh, LCSs here that opens an hour later than everyone else saw the excitement and jacked up the price on it after he saw everything was excitement on it. So I don't freak with that guy anymore, but um, I know he probably jacked up the price. Jack, what do you think about all this? Uh, you know, I think it's impossible to ignore. It's been maybe the most interesting topic that's been going on in the last couple of weeks. Um, 
you know, I don't love the prices the book's going for just as like almost a big brother to the, to the collecting community. I, I want to be like, don't spend $30 on a book that you really don't know. It could be the hundred dollar book, right? And it could be this, she could be this next big thing, but we're like two weeks into her existence. Um, and so it's so early for people to make these kinds of moves. And I hate to see the FOMO that sets in where people have to rush and pay those prices. At the same point, we like to say, buy what you like. So who am I to judge um, what someone else is willing to buy? And at the end of the day, the excitement in the hobby is something that I enjoy. It's cool to me when like Ryan talks about the line outside the LCS in the morning. Um, you know, I frequent a very busy LCS and it's the same way, right? Where it's like, you know, they'll have people coming in and out on a Wednesday. It's days pretty busy, but then you have those certain Wednesdays where like the line is there and people, you know, all the flippers are out. And the, the cynical comic people will complain about that, but I enjoy it. Um, I think that that gives that kind of energy. I think the interesting thing is really how DC Comics handled this because you mentioned 92 and 94 also being hot. There's been so much of a miscommunication about what like is the first appearance. We just today had panels leak that indicate that Hell Arisen 3 is indeed going to be like a full appearance. Um, previously, some comments that James Tinian made made us believe that 92 was. This really muddied the waters about uh, what issues retailers needed to be kind of stocking up on. And anytime retailers run short, that's when you're going to start to see the games with people raising prices and things like that. Um, but Either way, it's been exciting. I, I, I would like to see DC handle it better. I'd like to see a little less FOMO in the community, but I think these things are are good to kind of like give that shot in the arm that we need. Uh, and it, hey, it's something cool to talk about. Do we know a print run for this book yet? No, no but huge. like a yeah, hundred thousand. Yeah, and the last seems, ones were, sold out sales like figures were average around 75 to 80. So this will probably see an increase. Yeah. Wow. So the secondary market is probably the one that's going to uh, have the have the hit because if this if the comics the local the LCS is sell out, it's going to flood the second mar secondary market, and that's probably where they where I think that that's why I said it it's probably better to sell now than it is later because it's going to be so much availability out there. Right, and that's why we've yeah. talked about on the channel before that reader buzz books are the best long term holds because if the book is hot from readers, um, it stays in collections versus. If all of these books were bought by people hoping to make a profit, they're all going to eventually turn up on the market. Um, so the, this character's popularity has to not stay where it is. It has to increase or else you're going to start to see the dropping in price. Yeah. We've seen 89 stay kind of consistent with its value. Yeah. Wonder if the news coming out today and the, the panel shots coming out today affects that. I see it kind of lowering it, but I also see, that's kind of keeping that value right now because the news cycle keeps being fresh with punchline where you're talking about the 92, the 94. You also got a new character according to Tinian coming in 92 as well, right? Yep. Yeah. The unbroker. Yeah. Under I keep wanting to say undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the only, the only thing I had to compare this to is, is Naomi from uh, early last year. I just hope it doesn't become that huge bubble that bursts. I'd like to see this book, uh, if it's going to keep some steam, it'll keep some steam, but it'd be nice to see something uh, have, you know, some backbone to it and not just fall flat and die out. Like people were buying and buying and buying Naomi at inflated prices. And the next thing you know, they're what they spent is it, it's worth half inside yeah. of like two weeks. If Batman's, if this 89 is going to be a $40 book or a $30 book, if it stays there for a while, that'd be great to see. Yeah, me personally, I would never pay this much for this type of book. But like you said, buy what you like. If you, It's your risk reward, right? So if you think it's going to be worth more, by all means, that's your money. No one tells you what to do with your money for your comic book collection. You do what you like. I'm just excited. When's the last time we've talked about a DC book in the speculation yeah, cycle? Right. And, and I think it'd be... Go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. And wouldn't it be the writers kind of dictating this? If they keep that character in play... That's going to make the the long term uh, 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 popularity of that that of that character in this book go for a while. Like yeah. Andy was saying, he wants to see that he wants to see it keep going. It's really up to the writers, I think, at that point. Right. Well, that's why Ryan, I got a weird comparison for you. This to me reminds me of Jenica Turtle, and I say that because uh -huh. we're because when Jenica out, got huh? when Jenica got created, 
everyone's fear was issue 100 looming in the distance. What would happen with issue 100? And we're hearing the same things about this already is, you know, yes, it's all going to be up to what Tinian does with Punchline, but issue number 100 is coming and Tinian's already teased, you know, big events. So is this a character that's going to be long-term or is this cannon fodder for the early part of Tinian's run? We're going to have to wait and see on that. Um, I don't begrudge somebody though who pays $30 for one copy for their personal collection. I think do what you like. I, I think when I speak about somebody getting that FOMO, it's more about from a investment flipping perspective, but that buy-in at 30 or 35 or 40 is hey, you're rough. You're going to need to turn 60, 70, $80. We just don't see that that often um, from modern comics this quickly. Yeah. But right. if you're also, to... if you're going to spend that much for a personal collection book, me personally, I'll just hold off and get the second print. There had to be tons and tons of extra people who are casual fans of books and comics buying this book for it to sell out the way it did. Like the yeah. general, like the, the guy who's like, Oh, there's a line out there. I'm gonna go see what it's about and go buy it rather than knowing that it was coming out. So it did create a good buzz. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, I got to ask a, a question. What do you guys think, you know, with the debate back and forth about cameo versus first appearance, do you guys think DC's potentially capitalizing on that with this, potential cameo potential first appearance and then they kind of blur the lines a little bit here it, it kind of what i'm seeing in the community is i feel like with the debate back and forth that that line is kind of blurred even further you think it's I something think, they're I, capitalizing it, on i think what yep, the community right what, i think into it, i think it results that way but i don't think that was the intention okay. i think what the community sometimes needs to understand is that writers are writers like they're they're artistic people um and their jobs are to sell their books they really, a lot of them don't have a grasp of how the secondary market even works. So we give them all this credit that like they're out masterminding these secondary markets. <laughs> um, but like Donny Cates is a prime example. Um, Donny Cates is, I've, I've described him as he's the type of comics fan who rolls his comic up and put it in his back pocket. Um, he's not bagging and porting, like he's not that type of guy. So he's not, he really doesn't know how the secondary market works. And I think James Tinian is very much the same way. So I think he got very excited to explain like issue number 92 and issue number 94. And I think that's what set speculators off. But I don't think he was attempting to deceive. Um, I don't think he understood the terms in which we use. And that's why I've said I hate cameo in first appearance because only we understand what that really is. Well, the only time it means something is when you got money tied to it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. the Tinians and the Donny Cates, they can't tell you what's a cameo or what's a first full. We make that up as we go. And that's, <laughs> that's kind of where the problem lies. Yeah. I, I mean, if you want to get down to bare bones, I say 89 is the first appearance because it's the first time the person appears in a comic book. Although it's just Binox and another panel on a phone, but. Well, and you can go the other way. And I, I look at the panel. Lips. I look at the pair of panels from Hell Arisen 3 and say, I've seen more still considered a cameo so yeah you so, know buy what you like either way james tenian is writing a hell of a story right now mm -hmm. he's got let's, everybody paying attention to him let's not forget that that this book catching the heat that it did also has um an error floating around <laughs> so this book caught heat to get up to 20 30 i've seen some sales hair over 40 dollars um, the variants people are posting on eBay for five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and then accepting best offers. I don't know what those best offers are, but those error variants are selling for hundreds of dollars. Can we have to get a vote on who thinks these errors were actual true errors or not? <laughs> There's some of that for sure. <laughs> I, wonder. I wonder, but if you look at it, it's well, yeah, I don't know, man. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah. 